right, so now we're gonna actually mix, measure and mix the rod bond. So um, one of the key things, and you'll hear me mention this multiple times in this video, but it's really important. Um, we're gonna start with the hardener. Uh, and this stuff is incredibly forgiving of an inexact mix. But if we miss, we wanna miss with too much resin, not too much hardener. So we're gonna start with the hardener. And you can see it's kind of a mess, um, but all you gotta do is get in here and, and get a chunk, and I'll sort of use the edge of the bottle to get it kind of manageable. Now all I'm gonna do is, is put this, and hopefully you can see this, I tried to get as dark a one as I can, and then I'm, I don't have to just put it there, I'm gonna actually shape it a bit. I'm gonna flatten it, and I'm gonna sort of get it into something approximating a square or a rectangle. So that's a very defined shape piece, right? So I'm gonna take the extra, we'll put it back, kind of try to keep it off the threads. Like I said, this stuff is really thick, sticky. So lay it back on our resin. And now we wanna clean the spatula off. So what I've got here, I keep a big bag of these. I, I chop up whole rolls of paper towels at a time and I just cut them into little, almost like gun cleaning cloths, like gun patches, little disposable patches and we just wanna clean that spatula off without getting any on our fingers before we go to mixing the, uh, the resin. Okay, so now we've got our chunk that I hope you can see pretty well of the hardener there. Now we're gonna open our resin and essentially do the same thing. Just get in here and get a chunk that's gonna be about the right size. And I'm gonna put it down over here on a different spot. It's, I don't wanna commingle them yet. I know they're all gonna get mixed together, but right now I'm just trying to make sure that we get enough uh, similar size globs and fairly clean. So now I just go about kind of cutting and defining the edges so that I wind up with a shape of resin about the same shape and size is my hardener. And I'm just gonna kinda put a little bit more on the top. And this is the key. If you miss, and I can already tell you this is close enough that it's gonna, it's gonna mix up and set fine. But if you miss, you wanna miss with a little bit of extra resin, not a little bit of extra hardener. And you can just eyeball it the way I'm eyeballing it right now and you can see that I've got similar size bobs. It is a totally normal tendency, especially for beginners, or maybe if you're not terribly familiar with the way that these chemicals work, to assume that if you add a little extra hardener that that's actually gonna help you, that that's insurance, and it is not. That's what causes 95% of the mixing errors is people using too much hardener. The mix is actually, and this is, you know, before you argue with me, this is straight from Ralph O'Quinn, the chemical engineer who designed Rod Bond, may he rest in peace who taught me how to do it this way, although he used a glass tile, and told me that if you're, it is more tolerant of having too much resin than it is of having too much hardener. It's the way it's designed. If you have too much hardener, it becomes resin starved and stays soft. If you have too much resin, then what resin is mixed with the hardener goes ahead and sets up hard and the excess resin doesn't create an issue. Now what you want is an exact one for one uh, you know, mix, but just keep it in mind. And this is true for all the epoxies we use. It's true for uh, 30 minute liquid epoxy. It's true for your finish. You want a one for one, but if you miss, miss heavy on the resin. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put our globs together and all I'm trying to do here is just get it a little bit mixed up so we're not kind of starting from scratch. And then we're gonna start our actual mixing in earnest. And all I'm gonna do is take this spatula and just kind of spread this stuff almost like you were buttering a piece of toast. Now I'm gonna try to keep it all up on the head of the spatula. I don't wanna get too much on the handle cause it'll get on my fingers, but we're just literally gonna, and if you look, this stuff really won't drop. If you can see, it's kind of textured and granulated. It's not real smooth. It feels kind of, Sandy is the wrong word, but it has a kind of a texture to it. Now I'm going to ch change directions. If I was previously mixing north-south, I'm going to mix east-west now. And I'm just kind of spreading this stuff around. I, I should have looked at a clock. I haven't looked. It's always a good idea to read the instructions. 
um, in this case, and this is kind of Ralph, but uh, <laughs> it says mix for about two minutes. Uh, and that's pretty good. If you mix like this, this thoroughly, uh, then two minutes is plenty. But all I'm doing is I keep kind of changing orientations a little bit, but I'm mixing this all together, spreading it around. And, and I'm also kind of cleaning up and not wanting a bunch of excess. I'm trying to keep it all in one glob and try to make sure that we're constantly mixing it. Okay, full disclosure, I could probably stop right now and this stuff's gonna set up. And I've seen some really good rod builders who do it that way. And Ralph didn't mix it himself a whole lot more than this, but I'm the way I was really obsessed with Ralph, how long should I mix it? He said, mix it till it's mixed and then stop mixing, which at the time wasn't terribly helpful. So I tried to focus on how do I know when it's completely mixed? Um, and, and I'll try to get you to that point. Now I'm gonna stop and scrape my spatula every once in a while, try to clean that edge up, put that back in the mix, all right? So hopefully someone's looked at the clock. We're probably getting towards a minute and a half or something. But what I'm doing now is, and it's about 77 degrees in this shop. So your, your results may vary based on your temperature. It can also vary a little bit based on how big a batch you do. If you do a really big batch, it can start to get a some heat going from the reaction and it'll actually accelerate on you or for you, depending on whether it's good or bad. Okay, now all of a sudden, it's hard to describe, but I can feel this and I can, with the spatula and I can see it. Now all of a sudden, it starts to string and see how it'll drip. It's, it's definitely um, got more, got a lower viscosity than it had when we started. I don't feel any more granular sandy texture when I'm mixing. And you can see that it'll actually drip and drab and run off the spatula, which when we try to do that in the beginning, it was kind of chunky and wouldn't fall. Another way you can tell, I mean, I, literally I can feel it. It's a lot of the resistance is gone. It's almost like it's warmed up and gotten buttery. But the other way to tell is if you look, if I string a piece across, it sort of folds back in and smooths out. In the beginning, it would have real sharp edges. All the edges, if you look at this now, are kind of round. And so now I know that's, that's it. That's completely mixed and it's ready to go. So mostly just to keep my hands clean, I'm gonna clean up the spatula, the palette here and try to move it all to the middle. And then I'm gonna clean up my spatula, make sure there's none that's unmixed. And then now I'm gonna use this to bond whatever it is I'm bonding. Um, you can use your spatula to apply it, that works fine. You can use um, a brush, a glue brush, you can use all kinds of things, but this is ready to go. A um, Couple of more minor points before we kind of summarize and get out of here. Um, I talk about how well rod bond wets, and I wanna show you this, this is one, two, three plies of, these are the uh, Kirkland store brand Costco paper towels. So you can go get these, these are nothing special. And you can see I don't have that much epoxy on my spatula, but if I just go to clean my spatula, I don't know if you can see this, but that rod bond is wetting all the way through those three bonds. It's clearly through two and it's a hot mess and be all over your fingers through one. That's what I mean by wetting. This stuff is specifically engineered, chemically engineered and designed to wet out and fill pores and create a great bond. And man, does it ever work. So someday take whatever 30 minute liquid epoxy you're using, which is probably adequately strong for rod building purposes and try wiping off your spatula with three plies. And what you'll see is it doesn't even go through two. I know that makes no sense that a paste epoxy would wet and penetrate better than a liquid epoxy, but it does. And that's part of why it's such a brilliant product is it was designed to do that. Um, last thing to think about, um, one of the things that people also struggle with is how long do I let this set? When? How do I know when it's done? What I like to do is once I bond, what I'm gonna bond with this, and I'm, I'm putting on a, uh, a rubber gimbal on a slow pitch jigging rod, and I'm putting a replacement rear grip on a surf rod that got tore up that's a repair. But when I'm finished with this, I'm gonna leave my excess rod bond on this mixing pallet. And so I'll come back in 12 hours or eight hours or whenever, and if I wanna know whether it's set up, all I have to do is touch this, not try to twist my assembly that I bonded or anything else, and I'll be able to tell um, that it's set.
All right, so here we are. Um, it's 12 hours later. We've got our mixing palette. You can see that our rod bond is set up completely, yet is still flexible, which is remarkable. It's what makes it such a great product. Uh, so we're good to go. You can now discard it, and you won't need that anymore. A um, couple of things to think about uh, to wrap this up. So um, first of all, this is as strong a product as I've ever used. If you have any doubts how strong it is, just put a rod together with it and have to take it apart upon repair or something. It's impossible to get apart. Um, but that being said, you still need to follow good habits. And specifically, you need good water break free surface prep. So if you try to bond two dirty surfaces, not even rod bond is gonna save you. So you need to make sure and get a good, clean, water break free surface prep on both the surfaces you're gonna bond. If you're not sure how to do that, you can go to the uh, library at rodbuilding.org uh, and Rodmaker Magazine has an awesome article uh, with pictures about how to get a water break free surface prep. That may be a slightly confusing term to you until you read that article, you'll see what I mean. It just makes a huge difference. Um, in terms of uh, caution <laughs> with using this stuff, I always wear an apron. Uh, I have a, uh, you can get a shop apron anywhere. I have one I got at a, a ICRBE from Rodmaker Magazine. It's great, just put it on real quick before you work with this stuff because if you get it in any cloth, any fiber, um, it's not coming out. Um, so better to just use an ounce of prevention and keep it so that if you have a mistake, you drop your spatula, you drop a part, something like that, it doesn't get on your clothes because you will not get it out. Um, in terms of cleanup, like we talked about, you want to always have some isopropyl alcohol and a few cloths standing by. Um, I also like to keep a full-size spray bottle of IPA just in case there's a big mess, uh, but just be prepared to, to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, in terms of set time, it generally sets hard for me in about eight hours, but you can come back and check your palate here and certainly 12 hours, you, you're, completely, uh, you're completely done. So it doesn't take a long time. Um, in terms of what I use it for, uh, I use it for grips. I use it for everything carbon fiber. Anytime I'm gluing a carbon fiber grip in place, I like it for butts, gimbals, I like it for arbors in real seats, uh, and also roller tip tops, right? So um, I don't typically use it for regular light saltwater or inshore tip tops just because of, like I mentioned, it is impossible to get off and tip tops get broken. You have to repair them sometimes. Um, in terms of how much to use, <clears throat> because of its lubricity and how well it wets and it's so sticky, you almost can't get it off a surface once you've put it on there. So you don't need to use an excessive amount. Um, but I do think a little bit of squeeze out is good. And that's how Ralph O'Quinn taught me to put it together. So I think you want to use enough to fill any gaps uh, and you want to use enough to get every surface being bonded, wetted out and get a tiny little bit of squeeze out, but enough to, so that you can clean it up and it's it's not a problem. And so, uh, for example, a good tip, and I can't remember who taught me this, but if you will take, like this is a Fuji ECSM, let's say we're getting ready to glue an arbor in this, if you will take a piece of masking tape, and pretty tightly here, mask off, in this case, the threaded barrel. So I'm gonna remove the nut, and let's say I'm gonna glue in a an arbor in this. If you'll put a piece of tape over it, you can put rod bond inside the real seat, put rod bond on the arbor, put it into place. You're gonna get squeeze out. That will take 90% of it off and then you can use your wipes and to clean up from there. As strange as it sounds, I generally like a dry wipe to get most of it at first, then a wet wipe and an alcohol moistened wipe to get some more and then finish with a dry wipe and you'll be able to see you've got it completely cleaned up. Um, in terms of you know lookouts, the, the the only things I would tell you is it is a paste type epoxy. It doesn't behave exactly like a liquid type epoxy, and, and I would be advising you to do this whether we were talking about finish or five minute epoxy or probably not five minute epoxy, but almost any any kind of um, mix and setup product. It's a good idea to come back and check your your set up 30 minutes after you think you're finished and an hour after you think you're finished just to see you, you, you might get a little bit of squeeze out sometimes the paste epoxy moves a little differently than uh, the liquid epoxies and you just want to make absolutely certain that nothing is squeezed out or moved or you don't have anything you don't like if you have anything that doesn't look right or is out of place obviously before it sets is the time to fix it so just try to get in the good effective habit of always going back and checking 30 minutes to an hour later you'll be glad you did 
Um, the only other thing to be aware of is, and this is kind of hard to describe, but uh, because of the lubricity of this product, it will, things can on an aggressive taper move. So let's say that this is the butt end of a blank and this is the tip end of a blank. And let's say that it is much larger here than it is up here. So we have a very aggressive taper from the butt to the tip. And we go to try to glue on something like this EVA grip uh, and it's, we're gonna slide it into place and stretch and it's, it's kind of difficult to get there. It will sometimes have the tendency to move this way, to slide back up the taper if you don't block it, tape it, somehow uh, keep it from moving. Again, that can happen with liquid epoxy too, but I think just because the extended cure time with this and the enhanced lubricity uh, it has a tendency to happen a little bit more. So in the event you are really trying to jam something with some stretch to it like EVA or Hypalon onto an aggressive taper section of blank, just be mindful it may try to move from the fatter part of the taper to the slimmer part of the taper if you don't take uh, measures to keep that from happening. So overall, that's it. Um, the only other thing is, if you're still having trouble, this stuff is extremely forgiving. It, it really just always sets up, but don't try to mix too little. It's just kind of false economy. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. You saw that in this, in this demonstration, we probably mixed something like a half inch square by a half inch square, a half inch square of each part. I wouldn't go a whole lot smaller than that, um, just because the smaller batches you mix, the more significant, if you miss on the mix, the more significant as a percentage of the overall mix your miss is. So give yourself a little insurance and don't try to mix too small a batch. Um, other than that, I uh, appreciate you watching. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments or message me directly. Uh, please like and subscribe my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you any recommendations on other tutorials or videos or topics you'd like to see covered. That's how we chose to do this one. So uh, I'm listening, paying attention, appreciate the feedback. Let me know. You can also follow me on Instagram at Faulkner Custom Rods. And until the next video, appreciate it. Be safe and tight lines.